Hello users. Today let's go back to 1991, to unbox and play Eye of the Beholder on the Amiga. The first game in SSI's Legend series. First, let's take a look at the box. This is the original Amiga release. The game is based on the second edition of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, from 1989 and bears the logo of a licensed AD&D product. The back cover features some stunning screenshots of the game, which immediately bring Dungeon Master to mind. Indeed the Legend series marked the departure from the usual top view of SSI games, adopting the first-person perspective of the pioneering Dungeon Master from 1987. The influence of Dungeon Master on Eye of the Beholder's interface, graphics and gameplay is more than obvious but there are many improvements, such as better graphics and sound with different backgrounds depending on the dungeon's level, as well as the ability to add two additional members to your party. These extra members are recruitable non-player characters encountered inside the dungeon. Let's open the box. The Amiga version comes on three unprotected 3.5-inch diskettes, so it can be backed up and installed to hard disk. The copy protection is code-based, which means that you will be asked for a word from the manual at some point in the game. This is the Amiga-specific reference card with the system requirements, gameplay summary and hard disk installation instructions. Copying to hard disk is a breeze, thanks to the installation program provided on disk 1. Just drag its icon to the desired directory and double-click to initiate the process. Next is the rulebook, which contains a detailed description of the game. Your party of champions is summoned before the Chief Lord of Waterdeep and given the task to rid the city of the evil lurking beneath by starting your search at the sewers. You can choose to either embark on your quest with a pre-configured four-member party, or make your own heroes through the character generation screen. Here, you can choose from the races and classes available in Dungeons & Dragons. Then you can modify your abilities, select a portrait and finally name your characters. As already mentioned the adventure screen is very similar to Dungeon Master, so those who've played it should feel at home. When safe from monsters, your party can set camp. There, you can memorize spells and access the game's options to save your progress.
The manual includes a description of all the spells available to your magic users, in-game. Then it provides some background on the history of Waterdeep from its early years under Chieftain Nemoa's rule, to present-day events under Lord Paladinson. The most prominent figures being the Hooded Lords of Secret Identity, who rule by equal vote. The manual ends with a reference of all monsters found inside the dungeon, and the tables of attainable character levels. For those in need of a helping hand, a clue book can be purchased separately. The package also includes a map of Waterdeep sewer levels, to get you started. Finally, there's SSI's product catalogs. Let's see how many more games are available. Let's take a final look at the box and its contents.
Now put on your armor, sheathe your swords, and to Waterdeep we ride. Let's play with the pre-configured party.
Let's camp here before we climb down this ladder to prepare ourselves and take some rest. Before going down, we need to answer this question. Downwards we go. Let's save our progress here, for today. Until the next episode and the adventures that await on the next level, here are some more videos for you.